When I think of a good game to play while I'm waiting for my vaccine... Yep, that joke's going to remain relevant. Risk of Rain 2 comes to mind. Playing this game is like drinking Morgan Freeman cum. You don't expect it to be good, but it's pretty fucking good. When you first start, you get this shitty ass character. A very basic bitch. Probably gets a wet dream after going out on a family road trip. Couldn't be me, but Donnie. Show him the other character. Oh, uh, right this way, so we got Wally. We got Archie, and we got a fucking lizard thing who when you play with your friends, you think is an enemy. Oh, hold on. I think this one's glitched. <laughs> Maps are different enough to help make every run feel different but flow well. Some rocks moved here, a bridge moved there. Noticeable stuff, but nothing that makes you wonder why the map was changed so drastically. As you progress through the stages and acquire more items, you get stronger and stronger, like any other game. You know, hump a chair leg before going after a human leg. And shit, when you're able to hump that human leg properly, you're able to fucking penetrate that fucker. I am your god! Characters and abilities are gained from just playing the game. So your money is of no use here, rich man. Yup, in this day and age, unlocking characters by playing the game is seen as a plus. What a shitty ass sales pitch. There's not really a big emphasis of story to this game, but there is very interesting lore if you want to learn more about the game. If you think that no story disqualifies it from whether or not you should play this game, then you are a shallow individual and you should open your mind to playing this game because it is genuinely fun. Oh, and you want to know a really cool part about this game? Is that it can give two fucks if you're OP, because you can hold as many items as you want. Risk of Rain 2 is like your friend's cool dad. He doesn't care what you guys do as long as you guys are having fun. He doesn't care if your inventory is only filled with movement speed items and every step you take on a small hill launches you to the fucking stratosphere. And he certainly doesn't care if all you have to do to kill enemies is just stand still. Wanna know why? It's because while you're having fun, he's fucking your mom. And you're okay with that because he's just so goddamn cool. What's up with all these weird commercials? Donnie, show him the gameplay loop. Oh, uh, right away, sir. See, it's quite simple. Choose your character, kill enemies to get the money from the grubby little mitts, or find these pods like some type of asshole. Get items from these chests, and when you think you've overstayed your welcome like my Uncle Joey, oh, bless his heart, but he keeps on fucking eating my sausages. You know, Ma spends real good money on them, and she has a difficult time of making them. You see, her bones ain't what they used to be. Anyway, you can leave by using the teleporter after killing the teleporter boss and repeat the process until you become as strong as my Ma sausages and kill the final boss. Or keep going till your heart's content. And hey, maybe I'm being the asshole here and you just want to stay in the first stage. Who knows? You play how you want to play, eh? There are three different item rarities and each image represents the usefulness of that item. See here at the bottom, we have the common items. One monkey weak, but more monkey together become strong. Next, we have your uncommon items, which is like having two washing machines. Yeah, it's cool, but... You only need one of them, you know, like one of them is enough. And for the top of the pyramid, we have the legendary items, which is like having one huge monkey who spent its entire life training in order to break the steel cage that it's held in to enact its revenge on those who did him wrong. You also have equipment items which allow you to do cool things when activated, like chunk a boss for some of its health or fly around, but of course at the cost of a high cooldown. Then there are moon items, which are strong, but they have their drawbacks, such as a 100% increase to base damage, but your health is half. And lastly, you have boss items, which give you the powers of the boss that you killed, such as Siphon, which life steals from the nearest character to you. I don't have much to say on the art style, other than I think it's good, you know, it's fine. But what I do have a lot to say about is the fucking music and this shit hits hard man. Especially when there's a lot of things happening on the screen and the music just starts raw dog in your ears with the fucking steamy load of S tier music. I mean, I mean, look, just take a look at this. Yes, siri! What you just experienced there is full on brain stim, you fucking lation. I'm talking chaos on chaos right in your fucking ear holes. Oh shit. My eyes and ears just combed. Oh, hold on. Jimmy, how happy are folks who play Risk of Rain 2? Happier than Donnie eating sausages. Fuck this, I'm gonna go play Risk of Rain 2. 
My only one complaint with this game is that when playing with friends, there's a lot of competition when getting more items from chests because everyone just wants more items. There are more things that I could have talked about, such as different dimensions and artifacts, but I wanted to keep this video short. However, if anything I've said interests you enough, then you will most likely have fun playing this game. Fuck, I do love games with a lot of heart and polish, which is why I'm giving Risk of Rain 2 a 10 out of 10. And, as closing remarks, the devs just released a new character along with new items, visual updates, and quality of life improvements. So, if you saw some items that look different in some parts of the video than in others, well, there's your answer. Along with all this, they provided a roadmap for future updates, so if you're interested in buying this game, do so now.